Welcome back to Student of the Gun University. I am your host and your instructor for today, Professor Paul Markle. And do us a favor, uh, do some administrative work here. I want you to go ahead and tag somebody, share this with somebody. At least one person in your life needs to have this information. And in addition to that, I want you to go ahead and check in. Tell us where you are on planet Earth right now, whether it's the YouTube camera or the Facebook camera, regardless. Tell us where you are. Where are you watching from? And today, obviously, is a continuation of yesterday's five security strategies that could save your life video series. Okay? Uh, how's that sound? Jared, are we w doing well on the uh, other side of the camera there? Yeah, we're doing all right. Okay, fantastic. It's fantastic. on Facebook and YouTube. So Facebook and YouTube. Let's go ahead and uh, well, we'll do a little bit of a review. What did we talk about yesterday? Yesterday, we said that uh, our primary concerns, we begin... We understand that we need to have some type of security. We need to bump up our security. We need to be more concerned about our personal safety and security. Everybody reaches that epiphany at some point in time. And you say to yourself, I should be doing something, but I don't know what that something is. So you go to the internet, like everybody on planet Earth, and you research safety and security, and you're just bombarded. You get overload. You don't know where to begin. So yesterday, we talked about where to begin. Where we're going to begin there is at the home, environmental security, okay, environmental control. And today, we're going to talk about vigilance. People will tell you, security experts all the time, after every heinous act, after every terrorist act, after every you know, mass shooting, mass casualty event, what have you, the security experts will come on Fox News or whatever, and they'll say things like, well, we recommend that everyone remain vigilant and alert. Okay. And how? And saying recommend being vigilant and alert doesn't really help you, right? Uh, I can say anything. It doesn't really give you... I can say, don't get killed in a car crash. How should I not get killed in a car crash? Well, just don't. Okay, that's my goal is to not. And just to say, be vigilant without telling you how, really is pointless. So, Vigilant, or to have situational awareness, or to be aware of the surroundings. Um, aware of your surroundings, aware of what's going on around you, who gets into your personal space, and so on and so forth. Now, when you're at home, and you have environmental control, what did we talk about yesterday? We talked about how many people are allowed to come in and out of your house? Who do you let in? Who do you let out? <laughs> well, who do you let out? Who gets control of your house? But you eventually have to leave your home, right? Let's say your house is secure as Fort Knox. And I know a lot of you young crumb crutchers out there, they're like, what's so secure about Fort Knox? That's where we used to keep all our gold back before the modern era. But uh, your house, let's say it's as secure as Fort Knox. But eventually, you're going to have to leave your house and go out amongst the public. And that's when you need to be especially vigilant, or you need to maintain environmental awareness. Now, many years ago, and when I talk about many years ago, I'm talking about August of 1986. And if you have a calendar and a calculator, you can figure that that was 30 years ago. In August of 1986, I attended a school, and I was taught by a man named John Farnham about... Jeff Cooper, Colonel Jeff Cooper, the founder of Gunsight, about his color code system of situational awareness. And uh, later on, as a matter of fact, it was uh, quite ironically, I was taught that before I entered the Marine Corps. Now, when I entered the Marine Corps, I was a member, like we said yesterday, of the Marine Detachment. I did nuclear weapon security. And we had a very conscientious commanding officer, and he wanted to give us a little bit more. So what he did, he would do little classes for us, and he brought in a videotape. I know, a lot of you young guys out there, you're like, a what? Those old things that we see in the museum, they're black and they have, like, ribbon stuff in them? Yeah, he brought in a videotape of a Jeff Cooper lecture where Jeff Cooper actually stood on a podium, someone ran the video camera, and he explained himself, Cooper did, his color code system of situational awareness. So not only was I taught it in person by John Farnham, but I was fortunate enough to be able to uh, be tutored via videotape by the man himself. 
And as I grew, I thought, well, everybody in the gun culture, everyone in the shooting industry, everybody knows this now, right? I mean, it's common knowledge. What I've discovered here recently, and very sadly, is Cooper's color code system of situational awareness is not common, and quite often, it's misrepresented. So we're going to do that today. Environmental or situational awareness by color code. All right, white. White is the first code on the spectrum, and what white represents is basically your personal comfort zone. Anywhere you go and you feel completely safe, you don't feel the need to be constantly looking for danger or aware of danger, you're just zoned out in your space. And a very, very typical one could be in your living room, in your den, in your family room, you're in your favorite easy chair, and you're watching a movie. And somebody could just walk in the room, behind you and tap you on the shoulder and you probably wouldn't realize it until they're touching you because you are in condition white. You're not looking for threats, you don't anticipate a threat, you are in your safe zone. Okay, That is condition white and that's where most people find themselves at home quite naturally because you go to your house, you figure I'm pretty much safe in my house, I lock the door, I've got a, a rifle leaning up against the, uh, the counter next to me here. You're like, what? A rifle? Well, you know, if you're going to fight, fight. Uh, so, but condition white, this is the condition that we normally find ourselves in, in our personal comfort area, which is your home. Unfortunately, many people leave their homes in condition white. All right, the next one is yellow. Uh, next one, I'm up the color spectrum. Now, yellow is a heightened state of awareness. Now, in condition yellow, and I hope that I'm doing uh, the man, the master, Jeff Cooper, I'm doing him a service by speaking this correctly. But in condition yellow, you are in a heightened state of awareness, but you are not looking for specific threats. You don't think, okay, I'm going into an area where there are bad people. I'm going to an area where I think I might get into trouble. I'm going to an area where I think that something bad might go down. No, yellow is where you should be when you walk out of your front door. Your head is up, your eyes are open, you're paying attention, and you've minimized all the distractions, such as, like, as in such as, U.S. This, Americans have phones. The attention vampire. You have minimized all the uh, distractions so that you actually can pay attention to what is going on around you. So people can't just walk up and blindside you. All right. Condition yellow. And this is not a, you know, gun at the ready, looking for bad guys, searching for goblins. This is just, I'm walking to my car, I'm in a parking lot, I'm going back from you know, from lunch back to work, work back to lunch, whatever. This condition yellow. Like I said, we're not looking for a specific threat. Orange. This one is probably more misunderstood than any of the other color codes. Uh, when I talk to people, most people talk about condition white, yellow, and they talk about red a lot, but they almost never talk about orange. I'm going to give you a good example. Uh, you're in condition yellow out in public. Let's say you're going to a public store, like a grocery store, a mall, whatever, it doesn't matter. And uh, you have your head up, you're paying attention, you're not looking down at your phone trying to catch uh, squirtles or whatever your favorite Pokemon thing is. And so you're paying attention, you're in condition yellow. And you hear someone yell. You hear elevated voices. Now generally when you hear elevated voices, it perks up your attention you think, is someone angry? Is someone happy? Is someone just being like gregarious or what have you? So you perk up your ears and then you hear what seems like arguing or screaming. Now, you don't know exactly that there's something bad going on, 
But what you do know is that it's not normal, that it's not standard operating procedure. So you walk along in condition yellow and you hear blah, 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 scream, scream, yell, yell, yell. And you're like, oh, something, something could be going down. And now you look and you're paying attention. You say, something could be going down, not just anywhere in my world, 360, but something could be going down over there. Now, I don't know what that is yet. I have not yet made the determination that that is a threat to my safety, but I don't know, and I need to find out. So walk along condition yellow, yell, 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 scream, 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 or something breaks, glass breaks, something falls, boom, crash. So I turn my attention to that area, but I don't have a specific threat yet. I'm just focusing on the area that may cause me trouble. All right, That is condition orange. So I went from white in my house, walk out of my front door, I'm in condition yellow, paying attention, doing my thing. I hear or see something that could be a potential threat, but I don't know, so I start focusing on it. <clears throat> red. All right, yellow, white, yellow, orange, red. Let's say... There I am, doing my thing, going along, condition yellow, orange, this something might be wrong, so I start paying closer attention, you know, looking at what's going on around me, and I see someone with a weapon, a knife, a bat, a gun, or whatever. I see a threat. I see something that could be a threat to my safety and security. So <clears throat> now I've cued in on not just an area, but on a very, very specific threat. Now, I haven't whipped out my Roscoe necessarily, and I haven't popped off rounds, but when I see that, that is when I need to make the decision, what am I going to do? Am I going to flee? Am I going to seek cover? Am I going to draw my gun? What am I going to do? Am I going to pull out pepper spray, um, my flashlight? Am I going to, what am I going to do? This is, red is decision making time. This is when you get to the point that you're no longer just walking around, you know, happy-go-lucky. You have to make a decision here. Now, some people believe that condition red means that you've skinned out your Roscoe and you're capping rounds downrange. Pop, 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 pop. No. What red means is that you've identified a specific threat and you've come to the position, come to the determination, that something must be done. Now, what is that something? I don't know. I can't answer that for you in this classroom setting. I can't tell you. And this one is where, if you don't, when you, this is where you go to the cupboard. When you reach condition red, this is where you have to go to that emergency cupboard. And depending on how much training, education, and practice you've undergone over the years, there will either be something in the cupboard or there will be nothing. And many folks out there, they go out and they realize, oh, things aren't right, I need to buy a gun. So they buy a gun, and they get ammo for the gun, and they get a holster for the gun, or they get a whatever for the gun, and they put it in their pocket, they hide it on their bodies, they get their little plastic card permission slip from the government that says, you're good to go, and that's it. They move on with their lives. And they believe, now that they have bought a gun, and they have the gun on them, that they are secure. And then they're, they're popping along, you know, searching for Pokemon or whatever, and they go yellow, orange, red. They have to go to the cupboard, and the cupboard's empty. Or all that's in the cupboard is buy gun, have gun. But how, when, why, what should I do, who should I shoot, how should I shoot? There's nothing there. So, and uh, many people have... Cooper, to my knowledge, I was never aware of the fact that Cooper put black into his color code. But a lot of places you go, a lot of people have adopted, modified, altered Cooper's original color code, and they put black in there. And black is, is kind of the point of no return, or black is where you go to the cupboard, and there's nothing there, and you're just stuck. You just now become a victim of circumstance. Or, could be, <laughs> that you decided you were just going to run to the store real quick, so you left all of, your, all of your ninja gear on the dresser, grabbed your wallet, your cell phone, and you ran out the door, and now you're faced with a deadly threat, 
and you got nothing but your empty hands and a cell phone. And you go into vapor lock and that's black. Now, why do we teach the color codes? I've actually had people argue uh, that the color codes is A, that it's too complicated and that it's bull crap and that you should always either be in orange or red constantly. You should always have your head on a swivel, head on a swivel, looking for threats, looking for threats, looking for threats. Like the, uh, the you know, the ubiquity, the, the four-man diamond in their khaki vest with their M4s out, and they're, they're looking, looking for threats, looking for threats, looking for threats. Let me tell you something. As somebody who has been a professional bodyguard, who has worked 12-hour plus shifts, you cannot, the human brain cannot tolerate being in condition red all the time. You have to do condition red in short spurts. Because if you think you can go 12 hours searching for threats, searching for threats, searching for threats, you're going to fry your brain and you won't do it. The whole reason that Cooper taught the color code is not so that you could be walking around thinking, I am in condition yellow. I am now in orange. I am now in red. No, he taught you that because he understood the human brain and the human brain needs steps. So, white, comfort. Yellow, distraction-free, out in public, paying attention to my surroundings. Head up, take the attention vampire away. If you need to use the attention vampire, put something solid behind you, hold it up like this, not down like this, because the eyes will always follow the hands. Hold it up like this, do your thingy, 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 and move on with your life. Orange, something may be going down in that specific area, but I'm not sure yet. Red, okay, I've identified a very specific threat. It's that dude, it's that woman, it's those people. Now I have to go to the cupboard and figure out what I'm going to do. That is red. So, there you go. So rather than just say, you should be vigilant because vigilant, it's really important. What I've just done in 5-10 minutes is giving you the how-to. And you're welcome. All right. That is the end of today's lesson. Now let's talk about one other thing that uh, people run into. They, environmental control, your house. And then we talked about paying attention to your surroundings. You go from your house to your work, work to lunch, lunch to home, all that kind of stuff. But what about travel security? People are very vulnerable when they travel. Why? Well, when you're traveling to a foreign area, everything is new to you. You know what is normal and in place in your area. You know what's supposed to be, who's supposed to be. But when you go to a foreign area, whether it's a foreign city uh, or even anywhere in the United States that you've never been to before, it can be dicey. And what do we know? We know that travelers are often victims of crimes. Very specifically, they are targeted by criminals. So what we're going to talk about tomorrow is how you can be safe on the road when you are traveling. All right, thank you very much for joining us today. I truly appreciate it. And I'm getting signals from behind the camera. And uh, Jared wants me to say or do something. Tell me what you want me to do, Jared. No, we're going to open up for questions. we got a five-minute Q&A session. You've got two minutes starting now to get the first question out. Uh, two whole minutes? Yep, two minutes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and... and, uh, and uh, I don't get my... Where's my coffee? Right there. Oh, I'll you get want it. me to stay on camera? Yeah, I'll get it. It's almost empty. What the? Oh, for those of you that are curious, it's my ying 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 ling. Thank you. Um, it was a gift. Darren Ritter on YouTube says, "Talk about color code at the movie theater." Mm. Color code at the movie theater? Okay, uh, it, it's very difficult. One of the reasons that Cooper made the color code was so that you could rapidly run through it, so that you could go yellow, orange, red really quick. Now, how do you do that in a movie theater? Number one, have a flashlight on you because it's dark. Uh, and if something seems to be out of place, you can immediately light it up with a light. Uh, I sit farther in the back. I don't sit up in the front. Things like that. But you're going to have to watch the movies. Position yourself. What else? Uh, how do you secure your windows in your home? It's not really... With locks? That that's, was from that's, yesterday. It's not really a color I think that thing. was a, a yesterday question a that yesterday got carried question. over. Yeah. Uh, hard actually, physical security, there's lots of companies that can teach you to do that. Um, I would go with, with a polymer window versus a straight glass, uh, something that you can actually, there's lots of window frames. 
opaque objects that you can hit with a baseball bat and they won't break. Um, that's like a first floor thing. You can contact Mookie if you want to know window. Address. Contact Mookie. Mookie <laughs> knows all about glass. Uh, this is actually a pretty good one. How about OODA loop versus color code? Mm. OODA loop, I don't really want to get into OODA loop right here, but essentially OODA loop would happen, uh, OODA loop kind of happens in conjunction with color code. Uh, I would ha I would say that if Boyd and, and uh, Cooper could have ever sat down, I don't know if the two of them ever met each other, uh, but they would kind of like shake their heads and agree. OODA loop is basically along the same lines. Observe, orient, decide, act. If you guys don't know what OODA uh, or Boyd's Loop is, you should go to a professional school and you should have them teach you that. More questions? We got about 30 more seconds, so. I'm unable to be in condition white any longer. Oh, this isn't a question, it's just a statement. I'm constantly yellow, at minimum, yellow is the new white. Is that orange? Oh. orange you're is you're always black. white during the day. You're white at some point in time. Unless you're an android or a robot, you sleep seven to eight hours a day, and you're in white, and that's just the way it is. The whole purpose of it is so that you can rapidly move through it. All right. Q&A session over. Uh, now, tomorrow we're going to have another video at 11 a.m. Central. 11 a.m. Central Daylight Time. Just like today. It's almost like we're setting a pattern here. Yeah, it's, it's like amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. All right, kids, thank you for joining us. Make sure that you share this. Make sure you tell us where you're from, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. And if you guys want to be notified when the video starts tomorrow, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, click the subscribe button. If you're watching on Facebook, click, click the live notifications button after we end here. And the best way to get a notification is go to studentofthegun.com, click the big orange button, it says sign up. You'll get seven training tips that could save your life. And I'll also send you a notification uh, tomorrow morning about the live video. There so. you go. Easy as that.